Hello everyone and welcome to the Iron Warrior Cosplay Gas Mask Tutorial. First off, I want to thank you so much for coming to this video because if, if you're here, it basically means you've bought a copy of my Death Core of Creed Gas Mask pattern for sale on Etsy. First off, I want to thank you so much for that because without your help and support contributions towards doing what I do, I wouldn't be able to do this. I've set up my lighting and my camera. The tutorial is done. I'm really, really happy with how things went, and I'm really, really happy with the results. This gas mask tutorial I've edited for you guys so that when you purchase my pattern, you have a video guide on how to put the gas mask together using GP5 parts. In the end, you will have something that looks like this. This is the completed gas mask at the very end of this tutorial. This is what I have done. This is the gas mask from my very own pattern. These parts are from a GP5 gas mask, which I explained in the video. But I really want to start off by just giving you all a big thank you. Because people really wanted this gas mask. People really wanted this. So, I made a pattern. I really hope you guys enjoy this pattern. I really hope it works for you. But honestly, the only way I can know for sure is if you leave a comment below. Tell me if they worked. Tell me how easy the tutorial is. Tell me how clear the instructions were. Everything and anything you can tell me helps me out so much with better content, my next videos, my next tutorials. So I really hope that this tutorial works for you. I really hope it's clear, crisp, and precise. And genuinely, I really can't wait to see the results. If you have created one of these gas masks using my pattern, using my tutorial here, please come over to my Iron Warrior cosplay page on Facebook or Instagram and send me a picture of your gas mask. I'd really, really appreciate it. So without further ado, I'll hand you over to past me, who has just recently completed this Death Core of Creed gas mask. So hello there, and welcome to the Iron Warrior Cosplay Workshop. Today we're doing the Krieg Gas Mask Build Tutorial. Krieg Gas Mask Pattern by Iron Warrior Cosplay. Note material used to create this gas mask is 5mm EVA foam. That's what it says on the cover photo here. Um, I want to give a huge shout out to Mark. Um, thank you so much for taking the rough sort of design I gave you and creating this really lovely cover photo for me. I really, really appreciate it. It looks absolutely fantastic. I also want to thank Richard Burge, Shooting Cosplayers, for allowing me to use uh, one of the photos that he took of me at Exeter for the background image of the second page. So thank you so much for that. Right, let's begin. So here we are with the... Death Core of Krieg gas mask pattern that I'm selling on Etsy. The link will be below in the description, along with some links to my other gas mask videos. This pattern uh, comes in two sheets, the lovely cover image you see here and the actual gas mask pattern itself. These squares are all 10 millimeters. So when you print this out at 100% on an A4 sheet of paper, if you get your ruler and measure these, they should be 10 millimeters each. If they're bigger or smaller, something has gone wrong in the printing process. These are all 10 millimeters each. I've checked and the pattern here actually matches the foam pattern I've got and the actual uh, templates that I've used on my current gas mask. So that's what you'll get. And the next step, you will need some tools. The tools you will need are a scalpel or a craft knife of some sort and a pair of scissors. You will then use these to cut out the gas mask pattern. This is what your gas mask pattern should look like once you've cut it out. Using the scalpel or the craft knife to cut out the circular piece here and using the scissors to cut out the actual pattern itself. Now, you're probably wondering, you need two sides to a gas mask. Why is there only one? You literally copy this one twice. You do you, you cut one and then you cut another and you only cut one of these. So you need two of this one and one of this one. Now, some people worry about having to flip the pattern over and such. You don't really have to worry about that with this because of the way I have done a fun little thing for you guys. If you want details on your gas mask, like I've done with mine, um, I'll explain that shortly. Um, but for now, this is what you'll have. And the next step is EVA foam. 
I strongly recommend that you use 5mm EVA foam. What you will do with the 5mm EVA foam is you will place this down onto the foam, trying to save as much foam as you can. Then using a pen, draw around the pattern and draw the circle and then draw around this pattern. Move this then to another part of the foam, draw around it again and draw another circle. Before you start cutting out, please listen to this very helpful tip that will help you in the assembly of the uh, Death Corps of Creed gas mask. When you go to cut out the face pieces, when you reach the longest part, so on the pattern here, on the pattern here, it's the part that will connect the middle of your gas mask. On the longest part here, make sure you cut at a 30 degree angle when you cut with your knife. So don't cut perfectly straight, cut at a slight angle. Don't cut at 45, the angle will be far too steep. You need a 30 degree angle uh, on this one. And then the same again with this one, cut a 30 degree bevel even uh, into that. That way, when you come to assemble your gas mask, it will assemble like so. It will assemble with an actual sort of curve in it. Not, not a perfect 90 degree, but it will, it will actually sit quite nicely like this. And it will sit on your face much, much better. Trust me. Once you've, uh, once you've cut these pieces out and the chin piece, you're ready for the next step, which is gluing. Now, before gluing, I have some important information to share with you. When I did my um, Death Corps of Creed gas mask, this is my current uh, Death Corps of Creed gas mask that I wear to conventions and stuff. Um, this gas mask, obviously using the patterns that I created from the original Yanovich video that I watched, and um, thanks to him, I was able to actually make these patterns uh, I spoke to him personally, and he was over the moon with the fact that I've created a foam pattern uh, that people can use. So I'm really, really like grateful to him that he shared his original rough drawing of his version of the gas mask, and then I was able to modify that into EVA foam and make this PDF. So thank you so much for that. The one thing I did take from his video that I, I, I highly recommend this, um, but you don't have to, and I will explain why shortly, um, is to use a Soviet-era GP5 gas mask. That's what these parts are. These parts here, like the hose connector and the actual lenses themselves, are from a real, uh, basically genuine gas mask. These are actual gas mask parts, whereas the face panel and the chin panel and stuff are EVA foam. These are genuine gas mask parts from uh, a GP5 gas mask. Now, the Soviet era GP5 gas masks, they are readily available on eBay, army surplus stores, army surplus websites, anything you want. That I would personally recommend that that's what you guys go for, is the GP5 gas mask. If you want to make it look like this, I would highly recommend a GP5 gas mask. Now, before... <clears throat> before you uh, before you worry, I actually went ahead and bought a GP5 to show you guys not only what this gas mask looks like, but also how you can use this gas mask and how to install it into your Death Corps of Creed gas mask pattern that I have made. The next thing I want to tell you guys is... You absolutely do not have to use a GP5 gas mask. Although highly recommended because, I mean, look at it. It looks so good. Plus, you get the gas mask connector. You get the hose connector for the tube, and it's absolutely fantastic. You do not have to use a GP5. What you could do, if you so wish, let's say you don't want to buy a GP5. You could take your, your, your parts. You could find... Uh, something you could find something for example here you go you could find something like this this is a, a Captua spray can that's actually believe it or not 
the identical size to the actual hole that I created. Um, you could use one of these and draw around it with your pen onto some foam and then measure outwards about maybe five millimeters and then draw a slightly bigger circle around that. And if you want to cut that out and make a ring, you could put a ring around this and then inside that ring before you glue it on, you could put mesh or you could put some sort of see-through fabric if you wanted. You could glue that on first and then put the ring over it so that you can still see through it. It'll also give you great visibility and it'll also not fog up because it'll be fabric. You could also go down the route of mesh. You could use like a metal mesh and, and cut that out with a pair of wire cutters uh, or a pair of tin snips or something and just put a piece of mesh behind this and then put like a ring and some details on it. So that way, you know, you'll have great sort of, um, you'll have great visibility for starters. You'll have great ventilation because it, it's a metal mesh. You do not in any way, shape or form have to use a GP5 gas mask. I just highly recommend it because of how amazing they make the gas mask look. Um, I, I, I like to give people the options. I don't like to tell people that you have to use something, but I do give recommendations to what I think you guys should should do. But if you decide that you want to go for a slightly cheaper route or you want to modify it yourself, or if you just want better visibility, you could do that. Another thing you could do, Inside my uh, Creed gas mask, I use this blackout material. This material, like I've said in my previous videos, this is car tinting plastic. What you do is, it comes in a plastic sheet. Um, you then spray your window and clean it down with some soapy water. Um, you then spray it again. You peel off the first layer of this plastic and put it on. You squeegee out all the water. And once it dries, it's stuck to the window. You can peel it off, but it's pretty on, pretty much on there. The water dissolves some special soluble glue for glass, and it'll it'll stick to it like really well. I've never had any problems with these. You could use that material without the lenses. You could put that material behind here, and then put like a fancy ring or something on it. You could even do the black material and a metal mesh. It's entirely up to you. I have to make sure that you guys know that you do not have to follow this tutorial to the exact letter and buy exactly everything I tell you to buy. You can absolutely 100% modify this to suit your needs and to suit your sort of current financial status, for example. If, if you haven't got much and you've just bought the pattern and you, and you haven't really got much in the way to buy a, a GP5, you could just modify it yourself. Use a piece of mesh, use some blackout material use a, an old pair of tights for example you know as long as you can see through it and uh, and it's breathable and you're happy with it and it looks cool then if you think it looks amazing and you're happy with it then do it but if you do go down the the gp5 uh, soviet era gas mask route there's a really handy tip i've got for you the tip i've got for you is buy the kids size gas mask Gas masks come in varying different sizes. I was silly enough to think that I needed to buy one my size when I first created this gas mask. But this is a kid's gas mask, and this was a, 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 an extra large gas mask. The lenses are identical. The hose connectors are identical. It doesn't matter what size GP5 you buy, because regardless of the size of the rubber that fits your head, the lenses and the gas hose, the, ga the hose connector for the gas mask are all identical parts. So instead of buying a 16 pound gas mask like I did to make sure it fit me, even though I was going to cut it apart anyway, I bought a nine pound gas mask, which is this one. And it has the identical parts that I need for this Death Corps of Creed gas mask. Now, just to show you guys, because even though I've done this in a previous video, this is a new video and I want to show you guys. This is the right side of the gas mask. You can actually full on just push this foam on to the current gas mask. And as you can see, it lines up. So the line in the middle of the gas mask, the actual where the rubber piece is, it lines up. So if I put both on, it would, it would look great. Now, 
a friend of mine did ask, "What can you just do this? Can you just buy the gas mask in your size and stick the foam on and just wear it like this?" I'm like, I mean, you could, but personally, I think that's a bit mad. I mean, if you're gonna buy a GP5, I would personally either wear just the GP5, or if you've got my templates, use these and use the parts from this to make this. So that little explanation and tangent to one side, I am going to be using a GP5 gas mask for the rest of this tutorial. I am going to be using my uh, pattern. And yes, I'm going to be showing you guys how to actually put this together. So without further ado, let's go. All right, let's go. So this is a Russian uh, Soviet era GP5 gas mask and this is going to be your best friend. This is a flat head screwdriver. This is the first step you'll need to do for your GP5 gas mask. See all of these little tabs here? You are going to need to push the screwdriver underneath and just lift them a little bit. No lifting them all the way over so that they face the other way. You're just going to break it. It's not worth doing. So you're going to slowly but surely Push the screwdriver, a flathead screwdriver underneath and lift these up. Now, a bit, bit of a tip for you guys, make sure that you're not pushing too hard into these because if you slip, you can stab yourself with the screwdriver. Um, if you're someone much younger doing this, uh, get an adult or someone to help you. So. With that done, you're going to need to now just apply a bit of force, a bit of pressure. You might need to lift the tabs a little bit more here and there, like that one is a bit too low. And then I'm going to check for any other low ones. That one's a bit low. There you go. That one's a bit low. See how it's slowly coming apart? So that's what you want. You want that. So I just have to keep lifting these and then we'll get this apart. All right, so there is the ring. Now, as you can see, it's still quite closed up. It's not like fully open, which is what you want. Put that to one side. Now, this next bit's kind of interesting. You can use the screwdriver just to sort of push underneath and push through. Uh, you can then just bring it around the gas mask to peel off all of this gray sort of fabric stuff. Once you've done that, you can sort of try and peel it off. You could use a pair of scissors if you want to cut this. It's entirely up to you. Um, but yeah, so that's pretty much step one. Now with the camera slightly adjusted because I need to work a bit closer to myself, this is step two. Do you see where all the, the ring has come off? Like we've taken the ring and the fabric and stuff off. On the inside of the gas mask, there is no like connectors or anything. There's no, there's no like, there's nothing inside the gas mask that you need to disconnect. It's all on the outside of the gas mask. Now, this is where it gets slightly different. Again, watching your hand, watching yourself if you're going to be poking this. You need to use the flat end screwdriver and peel off the rubber that goes around. If you can, start peeling it back like that. Once you've done that, you are left with a GP5 connector and sort of breathing holes and such and such. Now, before we continue with the GP5, we need to focus on this. This piece here is a valve. You need to pop your screwdriver in until you lift it up and just take it out. You don't need it, throw it away. This is where you're pretty much gonna be breathing through. Uh, if you want, you can remove this piece of rubber too. Um, I do on mine because I just want as much breathability as possible. So I take mine out as well. There will be a little bit of like very old contact cement kind of glue stuff that they used. So I always recommend just peeling that off using your trusty flat end screwdriver. Your flat end screwdriver is very much going to be your, your close friend throughout this uh, beginning process. So that's what I do. So there we go. So these three now, the glue and the two rubber pieces, you can now throw away into the bin. <clears throat> this, 
This is the valve that opens and closes as well. Because you breathe in, you breathe out, you breathe in, you breathe out. That's how it works with the gas masks, with uh, the filter and stuff attached. This is where the air will get filtered through to your uh, actual filter, which obviously you don't have because you're going to be a Deathcore Krieg. Um, you'll have the box on your chest, or if you're doing a different version, you'll have a canister on your back. It's entirely up to you. Use this screwdriver to push that out, and then do your best to get it out like so. You don't need it. You don't need it. Now, in here, there is another piece of rubber. You can even hear it rattling, right? Now, this rubber I have taken out of my other gas mask as well. Now, there was it was a bit of a bugger to do because you can't actually get to it in here, but you can get to it here. But the reason I'm saying it's difficult is because you need to get a pair of needle nose pliers and grab it and pull it out. Now, I'm going to try with my little little ones here. I might need to go get the big boys to do it because I did before. Um, I think I'm going to because... The rubber is so flexible, because it has to be, because it's for air, that you need to get a pair of needle nose pliers to sort of pop that out. So with a trusty pair of needle nose pliers, you pop in like that and tear it out. It should come out in a circle, obviously with a tear in it, but you don't need this either, so throw that away. You will be left with a slight rattle. It's a little... Um, little metal piece that they have inside there. Um, it's up to you what you do with that. I've left mine in because it doesn't really do anything. It won't, it'll never come out because it's riveted in, so you'll be okay. Um, but this basically keeps you from passing out um, because basically now this is just a bunch of holes that go out to the gas mask and everything. This tube here where the hose connects to... Um, I I did block up my gas mask hose. I haven't anymore, but where I get all my oxygen from is from this hole here. When you breathe in, it'll come through this large hole here into the gas mask. So don't block any of these. Um, it'll come through here. This is where you'll breathe in and out. Condensation will happen uh, in the tube, like all the way down the inside of the tube. The tube is rubber. It's covered in a fabric. Um, so when you take it off, don't do what I did. I, I took mine off and sort of flung it over my shoulder and a load of spit came out of it, a load of, load of um, condensation and stuff. So that was really that was really bad. But um, I did block up the holes in my gas mask, but I, I've taken those out because I plan on putting a small fan. Uh, Janovic recommended I put a small fan inside the gas mask box, which I haven't done yet, but I might figure that out at some point. And that little fan will be able to blow air up into the gas mask. I am worried about condensation and stuff killing the fan. But uh, like I've said, we'll see what happens. I'm currently quite happy with the setup I've got, but we'll see. So there you go. That's pretty much everything you need to do. Uh, something else I recommend is here where the um, actual gas mask hose connects. Keep this piece of rubber in. This is the rubber that seals the end of the hose can keep that that's really handy it's uh it, it's something to butt up against that holds your gas mask properly when you tighten it up and you'll be okay so there you go that is all you need so like i said that's how it will end up looking just like the inside of the gas mask i have here there you go sorry about the lighting let me just try and match this up flip it around there you go so it's the same you see so that's step one, taking off that. This piece here, you don't have to keep. I, I didn't use it. I don't recommend anyone using it, but if you want to keep it, you're welcome to use it. I threw it away. What you need to keep is this metal ring. This metal ring is what you need to keep because this is what's going to actually help hold your uh, GP5 onto your Death Curve Creek gas mask when we get to that piece. So moving on to the next step, which is the lenses. So the GP5 lenses. Now, grab your trusty friend and companion, the flathead screwdriver, fold the rubber over, and like you did with the other one, gently lift these metal tabs all the way around the lenses. Do not stab yourself like I almost did earlier. <laughs> Typical after I give the safety announcement, I almost slip and like completely stab myself. So do that 
just like we did with the, um, the actual hose connector and meet me back here shortly. So I've only done the one just to show you, but once you've lifted all those tabs, just like we did with the hose connector, pop the aluminium ring off and make sure you pop this to a different side than the gas mask one. Even though it's bigger, it's not that much bigger and can easily be confused. It, it, they, it is actually bigger because this one will fit inside this one like that. But if you confuse them, it can get a bit of a, you know, it can be a bit of a pain in the ass. So that big one is for that one. Keep this one separate. Now, once again, using your trusty flathead companion, pop your screwdriver underneath the little gray fabric and run your screwdriver around, popping the glue off the edge of the rubber. Obviously, again, being careful. Now, once you've done that, take this little piece off. Again, if you want to keep it, keep it. If you don't, throw it away. I don't recommend keeping it. <clears throat> now, the next thing you'll need to do, and this is a very important thing, is slowly peel back the rubber until the lens pops out. Now, that's what I tried to avoid, but it does happen. Pop the lens out. The lens comprises of some uh, delicate pieces like the glass for example the glass needs to be kept very very safe you then have the inner and the outer rings okay the inner and outer rings now these three parts you need to keep these are very important you need to keep these don't get rid of them but something you do need to do that i highly recommend like i've done in my Krieg gas mask here is remove the rubber layer from the glass. I don't keep the rubber layer. It it looks when you put this into the in, when you put this into the gas mask, it'll show a little bit, and I I prefer not to. If you prefer to keep this rubber piece in, again, it's entirely up to you not using your screwdriver for this delicate bit, using your scalpel or a blade, make sure that you, you're pushing away into a place where if you do slip, it, it, it just buggers off out of the way. Poke your, your scalpel through and just, just lift. And there you go. It's that easy, okay? You just push in and lift. Now, it will leave a gluey residue. You will need to go and clean this in a sink. I recommend using a toothbrush or a scouring pad or something. Something quite delicate so you don't scratch the glass too much, even though we're going to be painting over the glass later and putting stuff in. Um, I'm not going to be showing everything, like all the way to the very end and painting the gas mask. I'm just going to show how to assemble. That's what this video is about. So this can now go, unless you want to keep it, etc., etc. Keep these three parts with the aluminium ring that you've taken off and keep them together as one pile copy paste for the other side my guy <laughs> so you need to now grab your screwdriver and do the same for the other side so there you go this is what you'll be left with you'll be left with the gas mask hose connector with the aluminium ring and you'll be left with two lots of eye lenses with the two inners and the outers along with the pieces of glass without the rubbers on them. That's what you'll be left with there. And also, more importantly, you'll be left with an empty GP5 gas mask. Now, with this gas mask, there's some things that will need to be done um, to actually get the lenses into the gas mask. And that is you'll need to cut the rubber apart. So in this piece now, this is what we're going to be doing. I'm going to be showing you guys what pieces to cut and how to cut them, because you're going to need to cut them in a certain way where it doesn't absolutely destroy your face when you put the gas mask on. So first things first with the GP5 gas mask, now that everything is out of it, flip it inside out this is a very fun process don't worry about it you won't break it it's it's rubber it's very very sturdy 
you'll be a-okay. Now then, this is the inside of a GP5 gas mask, okay? You got the, uh, the little inserts here that go up to your eyes. They're very handy. They stop things from sort of steaming up and such. Um, you'll need to modify this quite heavily. Um, I recommend, first off, by using the outside of the mask as a guide, there's a line there. Uh, follow that line as best as you can, sort of up the middle, and then sort of find the center point as best you can. Um, what I like to do is, while the gas mask is turned inside out, this is how you'll be wearing it, obviously. You'll have a left and right. So, obviously, put, if you can find a nice little spot, just put R for right and L for left. Now, you're probably wondering the gas mask is facing you. Yes, it is, but when I turn the gas mask back the other way, which, again, is a lot of fun, when I look inside the gas mask, right is right and left is left. So, it, it it's as much as I'm trying to show you guys, I'm actually also trying to just do it for myself, but inside this gas mask now, right is right and left is left. This is the part now where some people get... A little bit nervous because this is where you will cut apart the GP5 that you've just bought. Now, there are going to be people out there who are going to be mega pissed that I am cutting apart a GP5. I'm cutting it apart because I'm making a cosplay. This is a kid size gas mask. I'm never going to use it. I don't have the filters for it. Whatever. If you don't like the fact that I'm uh, cutting apart a GP5, um, I apologize, but this is what I'm doing for my cosplay. Me and several hundred other Deathcore of Krieg uh, cosplayers do exactly the same thing. So following the line in the middle of the gas mask, start cutting. Now follow that line as absolutely best as you can. Especially when you go between the lenses, try and keep that as bang on in the middle as you can. Nice and gentle. Okay. We're doing well. Okay, hold on. Now, this is the bit that gets a bit difficult. You have to put your hand inside. Because it likes to play around. There we go. There, when, you get to, when you get to this piece here, it sort of separates into three lanes. But just stay in the middle line. Apologies that I moved off camera just now. Watching your fingers underneath, by the way. I keep forgetting to give safety tips. So keep following that line. Keep following that line. Until you reach the back of the gas mask. You now have two sides to your gas mask. You don't have to worry about this bit. Just cut it in the middle. Just just cut it, cut it in the middle. You don't have to worry about that. You don't need that. <clears throat> Now, you have these pieces here. These are a bit of a pain. Um, I actually tested my uh, Krieg gas mask with them in, like still in. I was going to leave those in. Um, but they're, they're a bit too bulky and they get in the way for me personally, for the shape of my face. So I don't know if you guys can see here, but if I grab my trusty screwdriver. Do you see these three lines here and these three lines here? those lines are the insides of these because they have like it has like a a split in the middle it has like a vein that goes and sort of diverts air around the lens this is where i just get a pair of scissors and i will do my best to cut as flush as i can it's uh, a bit difficult on the other side but it is it is super super easy to do but once you've done that, you're left with this middle piece. Let me just try to open it and show you guys. You're left with this middle piece. What you have to do there is just lie it flat, take your scissors and cut as flush with the bottom as you can. So cut as flush with here as you can. When you've done that, throw that piece away, copy paste to the other side. Trying to keep nice and flat. go and then flat in the middle
Now you're left with these sort of sticky outy bits. This is where you now need to sort of be a bit more precise. So you get your scissors and again, without cutting too deep, take your time, cut them as flush as you can without cutting through the gas mask. You, you don't cut through the gas mask if you can. If you can help it, you know, really, I wouldn't recommend it because rubber, it, it can tear, now, especially now we're cutting it apart and everything, but um, try your absolute best to not cut through the actual gas mask itself because it's handy to use for gluing and stuff. So I'll show you what I mean in a bit. I know you're probably saying, what do you mean don't cut through the gas mask? You've just spent the past X amount of minutes cutting through a gas mask. What I mean is don't cut through it so that there's a hole. So get rid of the rubber. You are left with the pieces that you need. Now, with my gas mask, there was a lot of modifying and a lot of editing I did with these. So you'll be popping them in, popping them out, popping them in, popping them out, popping it. You'll be doing a lot of that. I've been messing about with these. I don't know which side's which. Luckily, I've written left and right on them. So it is important to keep a track of left and right, and I'll tell you why. Is because the way this brow comes down, it's really hard to explain, but the way this brow comes down, this needs to be sat on the inside of your face. So that's why I've made sure to keep left and right where they are. So the next step now is here. Like I explained to you guys just now, there is a brow here. You, you, you'll you be able to see it because it's as clear as day. There's a brow here. There's a distinct line. It's a, a step down. There's a line there. Then you've got, hold on, there's a line there, right? And then just above it, there you go. So there's a line there and then just above it. I couldn't quite see it in the light because I'm trying to show you guys at the same time. The brow line there and then you'll see this faint mold line from the rubber casting process. Do not cut from this line down. Always cut above that line. The more you cut above that line, the better. So the way I like to do it is there's the line, there's the brow, there's the brow line. I then just cut straight across in a, I say straight, but as near as damn it straight. And then the same with this, you see the brow line there, you see that line there, see that line there. It looks fine. So you've got the gas mask looking like that. Gonna have a lot of rubber by the end of this. And then do the same with this one. Cut straight across. <clears throat> you are now left with the pieces that you'll pretty much need. Again, remember the mold line that goes down. Try and keep on the outside of it as much as you can leaving yourself plenty of room to glue. So cut a straight line up. It doesn't have to be super precise. Like I'm not measuring. There's no measurements or anything to do. Now, here is a different story. I've, I, I have developed a small technique for this and I think it works quite well. Actually, I'll use my trusty screwdriver instead of the scalpel. The three lines that we cut earlier there's a middle one. The middle one comes down and stops because it needs to, because that's what the air comes up and then the air separates between these two and goes around the eye. This middle one here, cut directly across as soon as that line ends. So where that line ends there, cut straight across it. That's what I do, right there, right across the end of the line. So once again, you've got the three lines, this line here, this line here where the air separates, and then this line here, cut directly across, and then just touching the very bottom of that line. So just touching the very bottom of that line, cut straight across. If you, if you, if you cut a little bit more, like I did, see the tiny little nub in there? It's no, no panic, I'm just saying that's a, a, that, from there to there is a really good amount of glue. Now, the brow lines, I've been telling you guys to leave a lot there. This is where you now need to sort of 
this this is a there's a bit of a technique to this it's a bit difficult to show on camera but you've got that brow line you've got the line i told you about then you've got like an eyebrow right so i'll see if i can show him yeah there you go perfect right okay so you've got uh, bear with you've got the instep the brow right you then got that faint cast line that goes all the way down there then you've got this dark you can see the dark line there that's an eyebrow it's what i call it the eyebrow um that is what you need to cut you need to cut that but you need to follow it so starting at a nice angle follow that brow line the eyebrow around and keep going you can flatten some of this out as you go there you go same goes for this one starting well hopefully starting from the same point but i don't think i'll be able to so it's fine but starting roughly from the same point going across the eyebrow just trimming that a little bit leaving you with two pretty much identical sized pieces two pretty much identical sized pieces luckily i've marked them left and right so i know which one's which left and right you will also have when looking through them do you see that see that little see where the nose would go see that there's like a an opening in the middle that is what you want that is exactly what you want if you don't have that you've cut you've cut way too close but that's what you should have you have the eyebrows see the eyebrows i'm explaining to you guys now about the eyebrows there you go you have the eyebrows you also have these two pieces here which are going to either be excess that you can cut off or used for gluing that's exactly what you need so left and right sorry there you go see that's why I'm, that's why it's really handy to have left and right written on them so that is the GP5 gas mask modified and ready to rock and roll. What do you need to do next? Well, we need the gas mask patterns. The gas mask foam patterns. Here you go. Or foam parts, even. This is where we start gluing. So this is the part I've been really, really looking forward to. The actual gluing together of the parts. Now... Hey there, so this is a bit of an intermission, bit of an uh, interruption because I have forgotten to tell you guys something, but luckily I caught it before I did anything else. When you've cut these pieces out of foam, if you want that nice detailed edge that I've got on my gas mask, see the line that goes up? I got all the dots, but do you see the line that goes around there? If you want that line, uh, I have made that into the pattern. What you'll need to do is, do you see the pattern here with the red line? What you'll do, You'll take your scissors and you'll follow that red line, cutting the pattern again, basically to the exact same shape, but slightly smaller. Now, the reason I've done this is so that you guys can add the very fancy detail line if you want that detail line. Sorry, I need to just get my fingers in here. There we go. If you guys want the fancy detail line, so cut around the red line. There we go. Cut around the red line. You can then, on the, the pattern that you've cut out, you place this back over the lens. You place this back over the lens part of the pattern, making sure you get this lined up perfectly with the hole. You will then take your pen and draw around this line once you've drawn around that line you will then need to get this piece onto the uh, other side of the pattern and flip it over and do that detail line again it's the only time you'll need to flip the pattern is for this detail line once you've done that take your scalpel or your craft knife and very very gently not all the way through but maybe like two millimeters deep cut around the line just cut the line like that don't cut all the way through but cut the drag the knife along the line a few times without cutting all the way through what you'll do then is you'll get your heat gun 
and warm that line up with your heat gun and that line will then open up and you'll get this really nice black detail line around your gas mask. I do apologize that I forgot that piece, but I caught it in time. So you'll get this fancy line that goes around the gas mask in the middle here. Um, what I then did, obviously, as you guys can see, is I got a, a hot little, uh, I got a lighter and a hot poker, and I just poked leather rivets all the way around it to make it look like it had been stitched together. So yeah, sorry about that. I do apologize. I, I forgot that a little bit, but I have uh, I have filmed this now. Remember at the beginning, I was telling you to cut a 30 degree on both. If you've done that, ideal. If you haven't, and you've skipped parts of the video and you haven't heard me say, cut these two at a 30 degree so that they sit properly, you can do so now with a Dremel. You can get a Dremel and roughly bevel them a little bit so that they sit as nicely as you can get them to sit. Uh, try not to do them at 90, it's, it's too steep, and when you do glue them together, when you open them up to put it on your face, you'll get a horrible, like, in kink, and it's, it's not the best. Now, for this part, you will need glue. I highly recommend contact cement. I have my contact cement, doesn't matter what brand, doesn't matter what you use. This is the contact cement that I use. It is a two-part contact cement, so you have to... Um, use a, a small amount on one side and a small amount on the other. Just checking mine now, mine's fine. You will need, uh, I use lollipop sticks because they're just handy, or a little brush or an applicator. I even have this um, silicone one that I use for like larger parts. And then once it dries, you just peel the, the contacts off the silicone because it doesn't stick to silicone. Um, you will need to apply a little bit onto this side, a little bit onto this side, and let it dry. So, using a little bit of contact cement, you're going to rub a very thin amount. I also have gloves on, so I use my finger occasionally, but I did put a touch too much on just now, so that was okay. So, a little bit of contact cement. You'd be surprised how much a little bit of contact cement goes a long way, but... Uh, Get a, get a decent-ish covering on there, make sure all the foam is covered. I like to, like to get mine nice and covered, but not use too much. Because this seam that you're gluing here is a very important seam. Because this seam holds the gas mask together. But don't worry, we will be, uh, there will be support. There will be a support. I'll, uh, I'll be explaining that shortly, but I don't want to jump the gun. So for right now, use contact cement. Now you can go for Thixofix, I believe is a brand of contact cement. Um, there's another one, let's see, Thixofix, Impact, Impact, they do a tube version. So if you don't want to buy a big tin or a small tin and you just want to buy a tube super quick, the tube also helps you apply it. You can just squeeze it out of the tube and use the end of the tube to, like you just put the tube end on its side and just smooth it out, it's quite nice. So that's those two ready to be glued. We are obviously going to put the lid back on the contact cement, otherwise it'll dry. We've now got to wait for the contact cement to get nice and dry and a bit tacky. So, um, by the power of editorial stuff... Woo! Would you look at that? It's now dry. Um, it takes about three to four minutes, maybe five minutes. I tend to do this. I like flap them in the wind and just sort of try and air dry them. You know, um, if you are using contact cement as well, I need to give a safety tip. I keep forgetting to do the safety stuff. If you're using contact cement in a very small enclosed area, like a bedroom or your kitchen or anything like that, um, open windows, open doors, or use a respirator. Get a little, get a little mask or something because contact cement is very bad for your health. Me, I'm in a very big workshop. The big workshop doors are open beside me, uh, behind me even, and I have my window open right behind the camera, directly behind the camera. There is a window wide open. I'm getting plenty of air in. Um, wearing a mask would be a bit of a pain for the video, so, you know, I just opened plenty of doors and windows to make sure that there was loads of ventilation so that the contact cement doesn't sort of make me dizzy or anything like that. Now then, with the contact cement dry, this is a very important, a very vital piece. You need to turn them so that the outward facing pieces are facing out and slowly, slowly bring them together at a perfect point. You need to take your time with this. Just bring them together. Bring the perfect tips together. 
nice and slowly because you do not want a lump or a line or a kink or anything here. Take your time. There is no rush. The contact cement is dry. It just needs to be applied together. Once you've done that, I recommend then squeezing with your thumb on the inside, see so your thumbs like that and your fingers here and squeeze down the line as best as you can. So now that you've squeezed that together with your thumb and finger all the way down, you will be left with a gas mask that should be at this kind of angle. Not not like a, it's, again, see how it's not 90 degrees? If, 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 you, if you put this piece flat on the table and this here is like bolt straight with, with the table and it's not like facing away at an angle, it's hard to show on camera. But if it's not like that, then uh, the angle is too steep or too shallow. Um, you, it, it's okay if you have done it, like don't get me wrong, if you have, it, it, you might get a bit of a kink in the middle of your gas mask, but I, I would recommend, you know, possibly taking it apart, dremeling it again, dremeling the contact cement off, please wear a mask, dremel the contact cement off, use a bit of sandpaper, you know, try clean up a little bit and, and try again. It, it does happen. Um, trust me, this, this wasn't the first version of this I had made. Uh, the, the pieces I made, I didn't cut them out perfectly the first time. I had to cut the, I had to cut one of the side panels again because I completely ruined it. Um, and then the, the underside pieces, because I had multiple pieces until I made the official pattern. Um, I had to sort of take apart once or twice and dremel and re-glue. So with that now being done, give that a second, sort of dry a bit more. This is a really cool part I need to show you guys now, and that is the inside of the gas mask. I love using hot glue as a supporting material because not only is it like a thermoplastic and it works really, really well, but it's so sturdy in, in the fact that if you use it as a bead along the middle here behind the gas mask, you will get a much sturdier, like front-facing uh, gas mask. So just to show you, I have used a considerable amount of hot glue to do the seam of this one, a good bead down the middle. I even put a bunch in the middle here to just support the center of the gas mask where I know for a fact I would be grabbing it and adjusting it. So while I'm wearing it, I'll sort of grab it and put my finger here while I'm doing it. But that's really solid because there's a load of hot glue behind it. Um, I have been asked, um, can I use hot glue to build the gas mask? I mean, yes, you can just use hot glue. You don't have to use cement, but you'll get a lot of you'll get a lot of um, lot of lot of hot glue leaking out when you put the gas mask together. You won't get a you won't get a clean seam. You'll get a lot of glue smearing out ever, and it's 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 not it's not the best looking thing. It's how I used to build stuff years ago, but um, I've 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 turned to contact cement for a long time since then. So with that done. We now move on to this piece. And this is what a lot of people have been confused about. So I'm really glad that I can do this tutorial, tutorial video just to show you guys. Let me pop that over there to dry a bit more. This here, I recommend start to roll it. Roll it up. Roll the foam up like that. It should, it should sort of walk with itself. It should sort of do that. And squeeze it a little bit. Don't worry about the, the wings. It's the front you need to sort of worry about. So once you do that, it should sort of sit like that. See how it wants to sit there. Obviously it's opening up, but see how it wants to stay a bit more like that. This is also quite an important part. This is where it goes on your chin. Now, this is gonna be the fun bit to glue because with this being glued, I don't, I don't angle these. I, I keep them straight because when the gas mask does go together, even though it does curve here, uh, I highly recommend not beveling it. If you do bevel it and you, you cut it, you'll get like, it'll go up to here and then it'll shoot up at an angle for the Greek gas mask. I, I like it to be curved and contoured to your face. So we're going to be working on this. Now that you've um, rolled this up, I'm going to get the contact cement and we're going to start gluing the edges. So just now, like I did with the gas mask edges, I have put a bit of contact cement along here and it is now dry. Let that go to one side and bring out the gas mask faceplate. What you will need to do then is get your contact cement once again. Now with your contact cement, I'm going to just get it off the uh, end of my lollipop stick here. 
And I'm going to open my lid. Open my lid. Get a bit of contact cement on the end of this. There we go. Now, with this, you need to check how far up it goes and sort of roughly start where that ends. If you want to, you can contact cement the entire edge of it. That's entirely up to you. But it, um, I would personally recommend just gluing where you need it. You could mark it, but I prefer to just mark it with a bit of contact cement and then go for it. So contact cement this piece here as well and let that dry. And when you join me next, I'll be ready to assemble the gas mask in its entirety. Okay, with the contact cement dry on both pieces, it is now time to assemble. Now, just like the assembly of the two front pieces, you need to be very careful. You need to first off line the point to point and press. Yes, I am gluing these flat and you will see why shortly. But we will just ooh, try not to glue that like that. There we go. There we go. So contact cement is very strong. When contact cement is on, it is on. So now that is glued very nicely. You will then, with the fold that you've done already, fold this over and glue point to point and then start pressing it together. Sorry, I'm not showing you guys too much, but I do want to get this right. You do just push it together. It's just contact cement. You push it together. Push it together. Nice and hard. And what I'm doing after, by the way, is there's a little bit of contact cement I've got on the top of it, so I'm just rubbing it off. Contact cement, if you rub it hard enough, it'll come off. Now, this is what you're left with. Now, you're probably thinking, oh, man, that's a bit of... this is why I told you to glue them straight, because if you glue them straight and you push the gas mask down, it makes a circle. So with the gas mask being the same thing, see how the line comes straight down, the line sort of curves upwards towards you. See? Cool, right? I think it's really awesome. It, it, I'm not gonna lie, it took me so long to get that to actually do it right every time. And I'm so happy to see that doing it on camera as well, it just did it right. So here's just a, it's a really quick dry fit for you guys. Here's a quick dry fit for you guys. Check it out. This is super quick. This is just temporary, but super quick. Check it out. Just it looks so good, right? I love it. I love it. Right. Anyway, so that is your gas mask pretty much complete. That is the pattern. This is the exact pattern I've used for my Krieg gas mask. It's the same pattern. I could even sit this inside this if, if obviously the foam wasn't, you know, if the foam wasn't like that and the, the connector wasn't in the way it would actually fit in. But that is how you do the gas mask pattern. I will show you guys more in a moment once I've let everything settle. So with your gas mask pattern put together, you will be left with something that looks like this. You could even, if you wanted, try it on. Just put it on your face and see how comfortable it is. It fits me like a glove. I'm over the moon. Um, this gas mask now is ready for the next step. So what you'll need for the next step is to discard this to one side for a moment and grab your GP5 gas mask hose connector. Now, I didn't add this onto the pattern because it's super easy, but this is the next piece you'll need. This piece of foam is to 15 millimeters wide by 222 millimeters long. That is the exact size you will need because this is the one that goes around the outside of the GP5 gas mask hose connector and it should meet up perfectly in the middle. Look at that. Now that's what you'll need to be doing next. So where the um, connector and everything was, where the rubber even was, where all the glue and everything was, this is where you need to put this piece of foam. This piece of foam sits around like that. I recommend first off gluing the tips together. Once you've glued the tips together, you can then glue it to the actual part itself. So let's grab the contact cement again. Get a little bit of contact cement on whatever tool you're using and put a little bit of contact cement on both ends. So with your 
ring now pushed together this will fit over the rubber piece where the rubber used to connect to the gp5 uh, i recommend putting the seam line at the bottom just because i prefer it that way and i think it looks nicer even though this is going inside what you'll then do is grab your gas mask itself now obviously i know the shape is a bit odd currently that's because we haven't done any heating to it i'll show you guys how to do the heating in a bit but just to dry fit and test fit you need to open the gas mask out a little bit with your fingers and sort of not force but slowly feed the five millimeter foam piece into the front of the gas mask so that it sits properly now then Make sure, it'll, make sure it's straight as well, because I just realized I didn't have mine straight. This is obviously not glued, so things aren't sitting like, you know, absolutely perfectly like in a completed gas mask, but that is basically what you'll get. And this is basically the same as this. See? So you got the two GP5 connectors, they go together like so. The gas masks sit at the same angle. They both sit at the same angle like that. They they both they're they're both they're pretty much they're pretty much identical. That that's the whole point of the pattern. And this is extremely pleasing to me as well because I've worked quite hard to try to get this pattern perfect so that you guys can actually just put it together like I'm doing so now and you know giving it a test out. I do like putting it on just to give it a test. I will show you guys later. Uh, I'll be changing the camera angle and stuff. But right now. You can now take this out now that you know it fits. We now need to heat shape the gas mask. Now, when you heat shape things, I recommend using a respirator. I, I've mentioned before I have my window and stuff open. I'm only gonna be heating it a little bit because when you heat EVA foam, it does release some pretty bad um, chemicals and stuff. So please either do this outdoors or in a well-ventilated well -ventilated area or uh, try wear like a, a proper breather or something like that or, or some sort of mask just to sort of help you uh, with you know the fumes and stuff like that okay so I'm gonna go get my heating block I'll be back in a moment so for this next thing you will need something to warm up your foam I tend to use a, a wooden block that I have I, I use this for a few things I use this for my casting and stuff too hence why it's all sort of hot gluey on one side the reason I don't use this side to heat anything is because the hot glue starts to melt and I don't want to get hot glue all over my new clean gas mask. So I have a heat gun. It's starting to warm up. It's a 2000 watt heat gun. It's currently warming up to 300 degrees Celsius. It can go up to 600 at full power. What you'll do <clears throat> is you will need to heat the nose cone here and the sides so that you can start just 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 buffing it out a little bit you'll be using your thumbs and your fingers to sort of push out a little bit sort of help round it off a bit more okay so here we go So now you can start just folding the foam to your desired shape. Now don't panic if some of the glue after warming up starts to come apart a little bit. That is absolutely easy to fix. You can see it's already rounding off. So this is what you need to do. Round the edges a bit. Get it a bit more. Try to make it look more uh, smooth rather than see see how it's already you know the the sides have already folded in really nicely now as for this seam i tend to keep this seam as it is i don't tend to press this down at all i like to keep that nice and straight the only part i said is just above here flatten this out a little bit so that this goes a bit rounder uh, like i said there'll be hot glue inside this later on to support it once we've done this there's no point hot gluing it before that because if you hot glue all the seam lines and stuff now it won't bend the hot glue will be holding it into shape so i try to keep this as uniform as i can uh, but i try and fold out everything as best as i can i'll do the edges i'll do this piece usually this bottom piece is usually perfectly fine you don't really need to do anything with that um although a beard hair might appear in your mask 
um, just you know fold the top around get it so that it fits your face a bit better I do tend to keep testing it um, it is really handy to keep testing it and stuff to make it sort of work a bit better if you guys so wish you could even get your piece and start you know placing it in and testing it and seeing how it looks that's already looking a boatload better so instead of having that horrible peak now it sits much much nicer obviously like I said it's not perfect right now but wait until we glue it and it will be see how it's already looking much better so use your heat gun you might need to use it once or twice I'm quite used to this so I pretty much only used it the once mine's pretty much done the sides are done the top is done the mouthpiece is done so you're pretty much ready now to glue this in um, with that being said with that being said, uh, I highly rec <clears throat> I highly recommend gluing this to this first before gluing it into the mask. So, contact cement it is. Let's get going. So, I'm currently applying a generous amount of contact cement to the GP5 hose connector. Just around where the rubber used to go. I'm now going to do the same to the inside of the EVA foam ring. Now you know how before I've told you let it dry before you stick them together? It's slightly different here because you're sticking two round things together and you sort of need them to uh, fit quicker rather than slower. That gas mask hose connector will dry much quicker than the uh, inside of this ring. So what I'm going to do is while the ring is still wet like it is now, I will take the very sort of sticky GP5 connector and I'll immediately attach this on and put it where I need it. Just take off a bit of the excess, push it on nice and snug. And the best thing to do with this now is to leave it for a bit so that the contact cement has time to adhere and dry. It does take a bit longer um, with the contact cement uh, like already attached like this, normally you would let them both air dry and then connect them. That would be a bit of a bugger. Um, now, I know you're probably wondering, you know, you, you could have done this when it was before gluing it here. The reason I like to do it before is because I like to test it into the gas mask. I like to glue it there, then test it, and then glue it like this. This is how I've always done it. Again, if you want to do it differently, you're welcome to. Whatever suits you, as long as you're comfortable and as long as you get the results that you are looking for that's what i'm after so i'm gonna let this dry i'm actually gonna go and take a short break i've been filming for the past four hours so i'm going to get this uh into the house to dry a little bit and i'll be back shortly with more updates so after a short break and a spot of lunch uh i have come back and this is now super solid and super dry which is what i wanted now, the gas mask is still round, which is really nice, which means the heat treatment worked. This will still now fit in. Obviously, you've got to just bend some foam here and there, get it to fit. But as you can see, fits really nicely. Might need some adjustment at the bottom there, bear with. There we go. So you need the, um, you need it to be so that when you place the nozzle down on the table that the edge line here that we've glued together is fairly straight not dead bolt straight but like fairly straight it's okay if it goes over a tiny bit of an angle like you can see it goes over a tiny bit of an angle but i mean don't get me wrong if i did it absolute bolt right straight it, it, it wouldn't fit properly but it needs to be that the way that's the recommendation sort of thing i'm giving you guys is if you're going to be gluing this in, um, try, if you can, to make that as straight as possible without making it obviously absolute deadbolt straight. Because if you do make it absolutely deadbolt straight, when you put the gas mask on, uh, the tube won't look great. Like The angle of the tube won't be fantastic. Um, that's how I do most of these. See how they just stand up. So that's, um, that's basically the whole point of of the ring and everything is also to hold it in. So now that we've done that, I'm going to, uh, I'm not gonna glue this in yet. What I'm gonna do now is show you guys the lenses. Um, we'll see, uh, we'll show you guys what happens there. Now, obviously we've got 
the glass and everything here. But what we also have is the rubbers. Now, remember, I've marked these left and right. Now, these, as you know, will fit in to the holes that you've cut. All right? So let me just fit these in just to show you guys how these go in. They're going quite nicely, too. So there you go. They go in like that. Look how clean that is, right? Look how just so clean. It is so nice. I mean, look, I'm going to pop this in as well just to show you guys how, like, how super nice that is. Oh, hold on. Let me just, hold on. Let me do my technique. Do that. And then straighten these up. Almost dead straight. Almost. Not 100% dead straight, but like almost. There we go. So there you go. See how it already pretty much is exactly the same as my gas mask. Look how I'm so, so happy. This one's a touch wider um, here between these two points. And that the, re the reason for that is because obviously I've worn it at cons a lot. And, you know, this one's a bit shorter. But like I said, this can flex. This can easily open and close. This is designed to open and close around your face. Um, these look pretty damn good. Uh, it is slightly annoying that things aren't glued in, but I'm, I'm not gluing things in yet because there's a, a bit more work to do. But I'm really happy with how this looks so far. So let's now show you guys the inside of the mask. So this is what I've done. This is this is the rubber. Remember the rubber I showed you? The, the rubber that goes in. Obviously, things aren't glued in, so things will fall out. Um, let's just pop that back into that hole there we go so i'm going to turn this a little bit there'll be some adjustments um the the whole point of having this like this is so that these can be glued in the middle these can be glued in the middle there this is where the hot glue sits on my one um then you have these here these will actually overlap this line which i think is really nice it's up to you if you want to cut that like i said previously you can cut this um, this is pretty much how they, they, they're going to sit. They, they sit pretty much identically both sides. Um, it looks and fits and feels amazing. When you pop it on, it, uh, you can feel the cold of the, um, of the actual rubber. And I know I'm not showing you guys me wearing that, but this is just me testing on and off. Uh, no point in me adjusting the camera back and forth every time I need to, uh, to show you guys me just testing it and trying it on. But this is pretty much how you will glue them in. So... I recommend when you glue these in to use contact cement um, and then once these are glued in use hot glue around the edges exactly like I've done to mine. These are contact cemented in and then I used hot glue around the edges to put those in. It is rubber by the way so you guys know that comfort wise there isn't going to be much of an issue because rubber is like super soft. I'm just pressing it against my face now. Rubber is super soft. If there is anything that you do feel it's a bit uncomfortable in there, obviously make sure you fit dry fit things. Put these in, test them, put it against your face. If you're thinking, mm, maybe this little bit of foam here, maybe that's not, you know, this little bit of rubber here, maybe that's not quite, you know, quite to my liking. Just take a pair of scissors, just snip it off, smooth it out. It's, in, it's, it's your mask. You need it to be comfortable. You're gonna be wearing it all day you're going to need to have things that fit and that are comfortable. So, the Krieg gas mask is ready for those. So, let's get one installed and dry fitted just so I can have a look at where I need to pop things. Because what I'm going to do now is dry fit that in and then roughly with a pen, roughly with a pen, draw around. I say roughly, it really does have to be just roughly. It does not in any way, shape or form have to be an exact science for this part. The reason you're drawing around it is because you just need to know where to glue. You don't want to, you don't want to just go gluing everywhere, you know. So you want roughly a little area there. So I don't know if you can see the little area I've drawn there. That's where I'm going to be gluing. So that's what I'm going to be doing to the other side as well. 
Um, when we come back, um, I'll be ready to uh, put the contact cement on and then I'll show you guys how to install these lenses. So just now I copied what I did to the left side to the right side. And as you can see, I've applied contact cement where applicable, like inside the line all the way around. So I've got contact cement there. And I've also added a bit of a healthy amount in the middle here as well, just to help strengthen that when it dries. Even though there'll be um, hot glue going in it as well, uh, I just prefer to have, you know, a bit of extra strength in there. But what I wanted to show you guys is I've already done it to the left side here. I've already done that. I've already added contact cement to that. I thought I'd show you guys how to do it. And it's super, super easy. You just get a good little dollop of, of contact cement on there, uh, on whatever you're using, and literally smear it around. Now, what I need to specify with you guys is keep whatever you're using level and flat with the rubber. Don't glue this surface here. Don't glue that surface there. You're going to need to be putting lenses and stuff back in. And there's just no point. I don't glue the eye sockets, the actual uh, lip around the edge. I don't glue that. They're not glued on my one. Uh, there's just no need. There really isn't. There is just no need to glue that bit at all. Now, if you're worried about the rubber curling up like that, uh, where, you, where you've cut it and everything, uh, the, the, the hot glue will fill, fill in a lot of that. So you don't have to worry about that too much. As long as the gas mask is comfortable when you dry test, make sure you do plenty of dry testing before this step. Because once you do this step and they're glued in, you are going to have a hard time trying to get contact cement and rubber apart. Contact cement loves rubber. Contact cement will glue rubber to pretty much anything. Um, I've, I, I, like I've said, I've used this in the past to make my gas mask. It's, it really, it really wants to hold on. So once, um, once it's dried, trust me, it, it does not want to, want to budge. So I'm going to leave these to dry. That's left. And that's right. So I'm just gonna actually no, I'll do them like that because when I lift them up, I can uh, I can do that. So right, this contact cement is drying inside the mask still. The one I've just done now is is gonna dry as well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wait for these to dry, and I'll be back with you shortly. Um, when we install the uh, the the eye rubbers, I'll uh, explain to you a quick little tip on how to do it and how to get it so that it sits right. Because you would like, if possible, for them to sit roughly the same like they are in mine. So that when you're looking through them, it's comfortable to look through and it's comfy on your face. So that's what we're going to do in a moment. So if you bear with me, uh, with a wonderful bit of editing and movie magic, you guys will pretty much instantaneously be with me in the next step. Whereas I now have to wait for this to dry. <laughs> Okay, so it's been a few minutes, but I wanted to come back to the hose connector super quick because I wanted to just explain to you uh, just a little bit on how this goes together before anything else happens, before I put the lenses and stuff in. Um, this aluminium ring that we have here, uh, we've opened it out, obviously. We've opened it out nice and wide, uh, obviously not too wide enough to get it off. If you open it up just a touch more all the way around, just a little bit more. Use, use your fingers, it's only a bit of aluminium. Use your thumb like that, just push them out. Only a little bit. <clears throat> the reason being is when you put this on, I haven't clarified how this actually, you know, what this ring actually does when it goes on. Because obviously this ring no longer functions like the, the ring would normally function when um, the actual rubber would be on the gas mask. But what I need to show you guys is First off, where this piece comes out, this piece of aluminium needs to be as close to this lip as possible. So normally it would sit way further back like that. You need to sit this as far forward as you can, all the way around, all the way around. Try to make sure it's as level as you can get it, with the teeth just ever so slightly on the foam. See how the teeth are just ever so slightly on the foam. The reason for that now is you need as much foam here as possible to glue into here because the foam is what will be what we'll be attaching to the foam, right? But you don't have to worry too much because what that does essentially is permanently attach this to this. Now, if you're worried about this ring like I was, what you'll then do when we get to this part, but I'll explain now, is I've closed the ring in. Like I've really, see how I've closed the ring in all the way around and then painted some dark, like some dark acrylics over it to sort of hide it. Um, I then put a small bit of hot glue all the way around it as well. 
I didn't fill it, I just put a little bit of hot glue around it. Just to hold the ring on, because it's nice to have the ring there. Otherwise, when you glue it, when you glue this in, um, there's always a risk that the ring could pull off or the ring could fall off. So it is good to just tighten those rings. You don't have to tighten the you don't have to tighten these pegs all the way down like I did. I, I, I put mine almost like against a metal table and just used the screwdriver. I used a, a wider tipped screwdriver and just bent them all in as much as I could. Um, that does inherently damage the foam, but there is obviously a possibility you could tear and you don't want to have to take it all apart to, to replace this foam. So I suggest just squeezing these in enough when we do it. But I had to just explain that in a bit more detail now, just while I'm waiting for stuff to dry, because that's another question I've had people ask me is how does this glue in? Well, mainly it's the foam piece. But as for the ring, you want that detail. You don't want it without the ring. Without the ring, it just looks a bit, you know, a bit silly, a bit naff. So you want it with the ring. Anyway, we are here now at the tacky stage of all the contact cement. Yes, indeed, it's all tacky. We're ready to glue. So here we are ready to glue. Now, I'm going to be doing this so that the gas mask is facing me as if I'm wearing it so that I get my left and right correct, okay? So this is right, this is left. Now, hold the inside of the rubber with three fingers. Try not to, like, overstretch it when you're putting it in. It can, it can cause issues. What I need you to do is hold the gas mask almost vertically towards you and just try and get the rubber insert through the hole so that you can start gluing, right? Now, this is where you might get some issues, but luckily mine hasn't like adhered too much. So you need to just try your best. It is a fiddly process, trust me. It is a fiddly process, but luckily mine hasn't adhered too much. Try and Try and feed it in as best as you can without there we go, that is much better than my first attempt. Try and line it up with the holes and everything that you've had. Uh, sorry, the holes, the line that you've put in. Try and glue that all the way around. If you need to, do a bit of stretching like I'm having to do. There we go. Now, I have got a small issue where it's not quite a deer there. Um, so what I'm going to have to do is just peel off the piece that has a beard and then pull that down towards the gas mask and then sort of force it to adhere in that space. There we go. So that huge gap is now gone. There was like a, a huge, huge gap there just now. Squeeze that in, give it a quick test. That feels really good because my eyebrow is where it needs to be. Cool. Um, let me just squeeze that in. Right, so there you go. So that there was a, there was a massive, there was a colossal gap here just now. There was, well, as I just saw you, there was a huge gap there just now. But there you go, it's all closed up now. You don't have to worry about it. Like, see, see how there's like dark lines all the way around it. You don't have to worry about that too much because obviously, you know. All the hardware needs to go on it next. So the hardware and stuff covers a lot of that up, you see? The hardware covers a lot of that up, so you don't have to worry about that. So that's the first one in. Let's get the second in, and I'll be back to show you guys how to install the hardware. And there you have it. The lenses are now installed. I did have to do a little bit of modifying in here because it wasn't comfortable to wear, but uh, it is much, much comfier to wear now. Um, the bridge of my nose was touching a piece of the rubber and it was sort of pushing into the side of my nose. It wasn't like super painful, but it was like, I reckon that'll leave a small red line by the end of like a long day at a con. So I'm just going to trim just a tiny bit more there. There's a tiny bit more. I need to just, there we go. Literally just the tiniest piece, just to straighten up a little bit. So there you go. There's a lot of little trimming and bits and bobs, but once you're glued in, that's pretty much it. You're ready for hot glue. Um, so with the hot glue, I'm not going to do much of that now because I need to uh, I need to install lenses and stuff, but I will explain to you super quick. Um, hot glue in and around underneath these pieces, uh, around, obviously when I say underneath, there's like a gap here. Um, you'll be able to, if you can get your screwdriver in there, just like squirt a bit of hot glue in there, go around here, 
put a bead of hot glue up the middle. I'll, I'll show right at the end how to do it, but if you guys are sort of ahead of me, then that's just to show you guys a bit of uh, a bit of what's to come. But yeah, so the lenses are in. It is now time to show you guys how to install the glass and stuff. Now, I haven't cleaned the glass like I suggested you guys do. I'm going to just leave them filthy for now because I need to show you guys how to do things. Um, the lenses have a specific way of going in. Um, as you can see here on mine, I've installed all the hardware uh, back in, just like it should be. Um, it does take a little bit of fettling. It does take a little bit of playing around. It, it's, it's not the easiest thing to do, but, you know, be careful. It is real glass. Um, me, personally, I like to just try and force the, uh, the insides out first before trying to do it. So let me show you guys how to do it. So I just try and see, I'm for, see how I'm like pushing the insides out and then trying to get the glass in at the same time. So it works, but try not to push down too much. If you do, you could end up breaking the glass. The glass is fairly strong, don't get me wrong, but uh, don't use any tools. Only use your, your hands, only use your fingers. Use any tools, you're guaranteed you're gonna scratch or break the glass. So you're gonna, you're gonna do something and it's, not gonna end up great. It's gonna end up pretty, you know, upsetting for you. Which uh, don't get me wrong, I've uh, I've done my fair share of mistakes, but uh, I haven't broken um, gas mask glass yet. So <laughs> famous last words. Um, there you go. That's how you install the glass. The glass is in now. Um, be sure that when installing the glass, that you get the little metal piece there down towards sort of the bottom of your cheek because that's where that belongs it belongs down by your cheek that's how i've done it because if you if you raise it up anymore you you lose visibility but that's how uh you put the glass in you can't really see like much of the glass there you go that's better you can see my fingerprints there so the glass is in so that's now also with the hardware and the metal and everything that's now given you a lot of rigidity in the mask that that helps with the strengthening of the mask now, considering it's still all foam so far, the rigidity is what you'll need to sort of, you know, keep it in the shape that you want. Try and never try and like, like try and when you, you know, when you pack this away, don't put it in a bag. I put it mine in a suitcase. I have a special cover that goes over this. I try and protect it. I am going to try and find something to sort of put inside it. That's sort of the same shape. I might get some, um, some someone suggested if I get some like cling film and some plastic and put it inside it and then use some uh, expanding foam so that I can sort of insert this piece into it and sort of keep it, you know, from bending or anything. It is foam in the end. You can use a heat gun to sort of bend it back out, but I prefer to just store my items as best I can. So there's one lens in. You can see there's a lens there. It's pretty cool. You can also see the camera there at one point. But yeah. That's one lens in. Let's do the other one, and then I'll be back with you shortly to show you how to attach the aluminium ring. So there you go. Both lenses installed. So that's one lens, two lens. Between takes, I'm not gonna lie, I did take the lens I just installed out, and I've gone over and washed them both, because um, I actually thought, you know what, if I'm gonna be installing the aluminium rings, I don't really wanna take them apart again. So with the aluminium rings, it is super easy. It's reverse of what you did originally. Now, um, with that being said, these obviously aren't in a GP5 anymore. They're on a, a custom base. So you're going to probably see a little bit of like, oh, you know, they're, they're, they're rubbing or a bit and whatever. What you need to do is when you are closing them up, just push the lens in into the into the actual mask a little bit. So you'll you'll have these. Just push the little aluminium pieces into where the groove is a little bit. It, it's 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 pretty self-explanatory. But when, once you start doing it, you'll uh, you'll get what I mean. But the way to do this now is to sit the lens on on top of the uh, the rubber as best you can. And I tend to start at the top here and work my way around. So the way I'm going to do it now is I'm going to push down one of these little metal tabs with my screwdriver and make sure it sits under the foam a little bit. So I'm going to do that now. You do have to possibly, I might actually um, adjust the camera to show you. You need to push it down and then push it in a little bit. So you, you push it down, push it in a little bit, push it down, push it in a little bit, push it down, push it in a little bit. So you're, you're pushing 
the foam outwards as you're going around. So you're doing a bit, but make sure you're not pushing the glass, okay? If you're pushing the glass, you need to stop immediately because you could possibly break the glass. Don't get me wrong, it's strong glass, but in the end, glass is glass. So you don't want to... You don't want to break a GP5 gas mask glass because I don't know if you can actually get replacement glass without actually having to buy another GP5. So I haven't actually looked that up because in the past I haven't actually broken any. I've been very, very careful. But when doing this, be sure to apply pressure like a lever action. So you just do that and then you lever it down. Now, you might need to go around once or twice. You know, you don't want to... You don't want these falling out at a con. So that is one done, you see? See how I need to go around and push down one or two more of them? They're not quite 100% down. So I'm gonna give that a little bit of a push, give that a little bit of a push, that one, and that one a little bit of a push. You'll need to go around and take your time with it and have a look at it. So that's that. So make sure, oh, by the way, make sure obviously you have the ring, like I said, that little that little line piece there, have it down at the bottom there. So that's what I've been doing. So let's do the next one. So you put the next one on. And the best thing about it is you can line these up with the previous notches because you'll see where the lines are from where it was before. So, you know, you'll be able to squeeze it down like that. All right. So once again, with the screwdriver, using a lever action, push it down, push it in down using a lever action if you damage the foam a little bit as you're going around don't panic as you can see i haven't pushed this one out enough so i need to push these down a bit before i actually start pushing because there we go that's starting to go in now so you push them down and push them in at the same time should have started at the top like I uh, like I suggested, but I saw one that was in dire need of pushing down, so I uh, lifted it up a bit too much when I originally took it apart. There we go. So you just keep pushing, keep going down, make sure it's nice and attached. Again, please, please be careful of the glass and also be careful of yourself. You don't want the screwdriver to slip. But I've had this slip on me once today. Luckily, I didn't catch myself. So, you know, little blessings, I guess. Apologies for doing this so close to my body, but I need the strength for it. So I need to support this against my body. Now, this is an interesting thing to show you. If you see a little gap there, you can actually see the gap. Here, see this gap here where I can get my screwdriver in? There's a gap there. If you see that, push that point specifically and really bend those tabs in if you get a gap like that. The reason there's a gap like that is the uh, rubber is trying to push itself out. So you'll just push these down and that will close the gap, you see? Gap's all closed now. So that's the whole point of these metal rings, you see, these little aluminium rings. The whole point of these is to hold everything together. They're, they create a perfect seal against the toxins and the radiation against the uh, against whatever battlefield you're on. So you can see that's not too shabby, right? So it looks pretty good so far. The inside of the gas mask, nice and even. Shapes are roughly the same. Got the... Um, you got the metal pieces down here by your bottom of your eyes and the lenses are now in. So there's a little bit more work to do to it. I'm not 100% done yet. So I'm going to go around, squeeze a few more of these down. And when you, uh, when you see me next, we'll be ready for the next part. So we're back. This is currently where we are. We are currently at the lenses installed with the metal rings. We are now moving on to... The actual hose connector and this is where things can get a little bit difficult so with your gas mask currently in the state that it's in you're pretty much going to be testing this all the time now so you're going to be putting it on 
testing it, put it on, testing it, put it on, testing it, making sure that everything sits right. So with the gas mask on, you should be comfortable to wear it. If there is any way, shape or form pain, place the gas mask on your face, find out roughly where that bit is and find out where it is here and either trim it or you could possibly, you could possibly dremel it. But the reason I don't recommend dremeling it is because rubber is not great. Unless you want to go outside and do it, that's fine. You could, you could do that. But um, if, if possible, try and just cut them with, with a pair of scissors or a knife or something. So this is what the gas mask looks like currently. It's looking really, really good. And by the way, you know, remember, this is only contact cemented so far. There is no hot glue in this yet. Um, there will be once the um, once the hose connector goes on, but this is where some hard work comes into it now. Now, of course, none of you have a, a, a Krieg gas mask that you previously built as a reference for the angle of this. So I'm going to just be showing you guys my absolute best way of sort of getting this right. Now, like I've said previously, make sure that it's facing as forward as you can get it right without it falling out obviously that's how it looks on the inside it's almost flush now i know i understand it's not straight it is now they get straight now um try and make it so that the angle faces sort of downwards but straight with the mask it, it, if you do it so that it's absolutely perfectly 100 straight with the gas mask like that as you can see it points down too much and there's too much foam sticking out and then this piece comes in way too much see how it doesn't look very good at all so the way the way you do it is take the very edge of this piece of foam and line it up with the edge of the gas mask here that should pretty much give you the ideal angle so when you put your gas mask tube in and everything, it'll look ideal. Now, this doesn't have any glue on it at the moment, so if it'll hold its own weight, great. So like I've said before, that's how it should, that's how it should hold. Now, the reason this one's a bit off balance, by the way, is because I balanced mine exactly like I balanced this one, but then I added this strap and put hot glue at the top. So just that little bit more has made it so that it like likes to fall forward a bit but there you go that's how they should look that's how you should be able to stand it if you can't i know i said that just as one of the falls <laughs> it's okay but um this one isn't glued so when it is glued you know it, it will be much better but like i've said try and make it so like if you do it like that and it falls forward all the time then you know you haven't got it at the right angle so you write write it at the right angle like that get it sorted get it seated properly and then when you put it down, it should, obviously mine isn't glued, but it should, there you go, sit like that. Once you get it like that, pick it up and then have a look. See what I mean? The edge of the foam is with the edge of the foam. There's a little bit out here. You don't have to worry about that piece of foam sticking out, by the way, because that piece of foam sticking out, when that is actually now, when that, when this goes on, like I explained in that little bit I did earlier, when this goes on, Trust me, when this goes over the foam, you're not really going to be bothered too much about the, the top of it and stuff. Once this is glued, you're going to be very, very happy. So, with that little explanation out of the way, I do have a quick little tip for you. Oh, my glove's coming apart. I do have a little quick tip for you. Put this in, right, and then do the little technique I told you, which is, you know, pop it down here on the table and make sure it stands up straight. Once you've done that and you've adjusted a little bit and you make sure it's bang on and dead straight, Get a pen and just draw a line. Draw a line with the gas mask. Follow the edge of the gas mask like that at the top until it comes down and the foam stops. Right? The reason for that is not only do you now know where to glue, but you've got a line that tells you exactly where the gas mask should go. And what's really cool about it is my lines end in the same place. That's actually quite cool. The lines I have in the end of the same place, which means this is bang on in the middle and that the gas mask is even because it's it's pretty much the same hole. So it is contact cement time. Nothing special. Just contact cement the entire bottom. Follow the line all the way up and around. There'll be uh, hot glue inside this eventually, so you do not have to worry about it. But the contact cement will hold fantastically. 
So, glue the inside of this lip, glue around the line of this piece of foam. You'll then be able to install it, straighten it up before it dries, and then let it dry. So now while the glue is wet, install the breather like I explained earlier. And this part is the bit where you need to line it up correctly. The contact cement should still be wet at this point so that you can actually just mess around with it. What you need to do then is look directly at it. Make sure the gas mask is straight so that you can actually see if the hose connector is directly where you need it. Making sure the lines and everything are lined up. It's a lot of work, but as you're doing this, the gas mask should be getting nice and tacky. And while it's getting nice and tacky, you can slowly squeeze and press around, trying to keep the gas mask in line. Try to keep it as straight as you can. The glue will slowly get tacky, and as it gets tacky, you can squeeze it on. Now, a lot of cosplayers I know are probably not happy with the way I'm doing this, but this is the best way I have seen around to actually glue this, this socket in, because this is the only way I've ever done it. <laughs> I haven't seen a single tutorial video on how to do exactly what I'm doing uh, in this sort of way, so that's why I think it's best that I do it this way with the contact cement wet. Um, while this is drying and I'm, uh, I'm straightening it up and explaining everything to you guys, make sure, this is definitely something I have to explain to you guys, make sure that while you're doing this, you don't try the gas mask on. Because you've just put a load of contact cement inside this gas mask. If you put this gas mask on and take a hefty breath, you're going to be as high as a kite. It is not going to be good for you. It's really, really not okay to do. So please, please don't do it. Don't do it at all. Do not put the gas mask on at this point. You have to wait for the gas mask to dry. Make sure it all cures overnight. Don't try it on. Don't try this on at all. I'm going to hold it now and let it dry. By the time you guys uh, come back, or by the time I'm, I'm back now, this will be fully cured and will be ready for the hot glue section. Look, it's the Wonder Twins. So, these are my two Creek gas masks. I haven't done the metal ring yet because I'm still waiting for this to cure a little bit. Um, it's still curing just a little bit now. Um, now, this is where we reinforce the inside like crazy. This is what I do with all my props. I use hot glue, and that's what we're going to do now. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to grab my hot glue gun, turn that on, wait for it to warm up a bit. So there's my hot glue gun. Where's my little pot? I got this little pot that I collect all the runoffs from the hot glue. The hot glue gets like quite hot, so there's a lot of little runoffs. I'm going to pop that there. That now will be the inside of the gas mask being reinforced. So that will be around the cup, around the uh, the gas mask hose connector. There will be a lot of hot glue in there. Uh, run up here as well, and there will be a lot around the, um, the rubber as well. Just to smooth it out. Obviously, try not to put too much in in terms of the, the thickness. Just needs to be a, a very light coating all the way around, just like on my one, just a nice light coating all the way around. Uh, that way you don't get any like hot glue pushing into your face or anything, because hot glue gets hard, and when hot glue gets hard, it's it's uncomfortable. So, so far, with the gas mask being the way it is, it's pretty much identical to this one, minus the little metal ring, obviously, because I haven't put that on yet, minus the weathering and the paint job and the lens like blackening that I've put in it. Um, I'm not going to show that as a whole. Like, I'm not going to show that as a whole separate video. I'll show you guys the material and stuff I've got. Um, I'll explain how to do it. But as for putting anything in, like lens tinting material or lens blackening or whatever you want to do, um, I'll leave that to you. 
that is entirely up to you guys. There is no, there's no right or wrong way uh, to actually do that. So, um, but yeah, these are the two gas masks. They're pretty much bang on identical. The only, the only difference between these two are, um, this one was my trial and error. So there's like a piece here. There's like a thin strip here. There's like a thin, there's like a, a triangle here. You can actually see, you know, see there's like a little triangle here. There's like a little triangle V here. That was me working out this shape. And from that, then I was able to get uh, an actual proper pattern. So I was actually able to get this proper, you know, the, the, the piece that goes from here to here that fits in, like actually fits into this um, with the five mil ring, of course. Um, but yeah, that's, that's how, that's how I, that's how I've done this. That's how this is, that's how this became a thing. So this now is technically has been built a lot cleaner than my other one because it's just three pieces, whereas that was like five and six pieces just to get everything right. Um, you may need to, while I wait for the glue to warm up, obviously, you may need to, while, you know, testing out your, your cosplay and stuff like that, you might need to trim this a little bit, or you might need to, to, to change the angle of, uh, of, the, of the, the chin guard a little bit. You might, need to, you might need to fold it or bend it or squeeze it together or change the sort of the shape of it to match your face. Once you've worn it at a con for an entire day, it is going to have contoured, like contoured to your face. It is going to be the shape of your face by the end of it. People have tried my gas mask on. So far, three people have tried my gas mask on. And um, it's it's fit them, but they've been like, oh, you know, it's a bit, it's pushing in a bit here or it's, uh, you know, a bit there or the, or the, the piece in the middle isn't quite comfortable for them if the, depending on the size of their nose or the shape of their face or anything. Obviously, you make this to you. you this is this will be your gas mask this will be your Krieg gas mask not anybody else's the reason i can't make these for people is because i'll make this and i'll test it on my own face i'll keep testing it onto my own face all the time but that doesn't mean it'll fit the person so that's just the reason i've made this pattern is so that you yourself can grab this pattern follow this tutorial and get it to fit you so while I wait for the glue gun to, to warm up, uh, I'm going to go for a short break and uh, I'll be back in a moment and we'll fill this with hot glue and get it all sorted and get it ready for essentially the metal ring and paint. All right, with the glue gun significantly warmed up, you now need to start gluing around certain places. For example, like I said, around the ring. Start filling that with a little bit of hot glue, just around it, just enough to uh, just enough to fill a little bit. Of, there'll be a tiny gap there because obviously the mask is angled and the the five mil piece isn't. So just give that a little bit of a fill. It'll also help strengthen it. Don't um, don't actually fill around where the where the metal part is. So obviously on the outer ring, not the inner. The inner will be more than okay. Uh, then another thing you need to do is slowly. Put a nice bead of glue, a nice gentle bead of glue. Need to push that in a little bit. Nice gentle bead of hot glue all the way up the middle as if you're welding. So you push forward and backwards. Push forward a bit and then come back. Push forward a bit and come back. Do that all the way up. That's how I did my other gas mask and it worked a treat. <clears throat> then just carry on go to the seam lines i do the seam lines i do the edges of the rubber because you know the edges of the rubber could do with a bit of support with the edges of the rubber i smooth that out i put a bead of hot glue and then i start smoothing it out i sort of stitch it if you will and then with the edges as well i, I do my my classic circular technique just to sort of help that out and obviously like i said under the the rubber don't glue on top of the rubber um you can peel the the hot glue off if you want to if that does happen let it cure and then it'll peel off fairly easily um but i would suggest uh just doing the edges doing under the the, the rubber Con um, contact cement sticks to rubber very well hot glue does stick to rubber but it, it can it can peel off like i i haven't had to redo any of the hot gluing on my rubber on the gas mask but I'm just saying, if you accidentally get some on the rubber, there is an absolute chance that you can you can just peel it off after 
it's not a big deal. You don't have to panic. Um, but if you do get a little bit on the rubber, you can just peel it off. But because I'm gluing between the rubber and the foam, the hot glue sticks to the foam, uh, but it does stick to the rubber a little bit. So that does, you know, help it hold. So I'm just going to reload. Um, I used to build everything with hot glue. Back when I built my Iron Warrior, I was taught by a lot of amazing cosplay friends of mine who were uh, also, like, you know, into cosplay quite heavily. Um, and they just used hot glue. But Dave Damon, um, who is Ultima Props, an incredibly talented uh, cosplayer, uh, showed me the wonders of contact cement. He sat me down uh, at his workshop in Devon, uh, in Exeter, and actually sat me down and taught me how to use contact cement. I, I couldn't have asked for a better tutorial from a better person because honestly, it, it was the best tutorial I've ever had uh, in person because it taught me exactly what I needed to know uh, about uh, contact cement and how it can work. He even told me that the contact cement he used one time, he uh, forgot to glue a part. He had to go do some stuff and he got distracted. Um, he came back the following day and the contact cement was still there, like on the props, on the foam and everything. And he just picked them up and glued them together as if he never left. I thought that was absolutely wonderful. So contact cement, I think, is is awesome. Um, more specifically, I think it gives you a much cleaner look. But I'm still a big fan, and so is he, of using hot glue on the inside of props for support. He is an incredibly talented prop maker. An incredibly kind friend, an incredibly nice person, and he is da bomb uh, at making props. You should see his latest cosplay. Right, moving on to letting this cure. Um, let me just get that a bit off. There we go. Right, so like I've said, with this, uh, it should stand up by itself. Um, obviously, mine is the same. It, you know, they, they, they do stand up. Um, I'll, I'll actually just lean that one against that one. Um, actually, I'll pull that back a little bit. So they're both done. They're both hot glued. Um, don't try this on yet. Let it completely cool. Let all the hot glue cool in it. Give it time. It'll need time to cool. It's it's not something that can be rushed. Um, you know, if you see any bits you've missed, like I just have, I'm just going to smooth that out because... Make sure the, the hot glue is as smooth as you can get it. Use use the tip of your glue gun to smooth it out. Otherwise, when you tighten this up on your face using the straps, you're going to have a, a bad time. This is not going to be a fun time. It's going to be bad times. It's going to be uncomfortable. Ow, I have a gas mask on. I have to wear this all day at a con, like, kind of thing. I love how uh, straight it is, how exact it is, exactly like my other gas mask. I'm really, really pleased with it. Um, like I said... They are a little bit top heavy. The, the gas mask leans forward, but if yours, you put it down and you hold it a second and let go, if it sits up like that, then I know for a fact that this is the angle it should be to look like what you want from your Deathcore of Creed gas mask. So when you put the hose and stuff on, it will look absolutely mint. Um, while I let that dry, or cool off in this case, I'm going to move my glue gun back to its glue station, move the little pot with it so it can collect all the hot glue that comes out. Um, incidentally, that hot glue in that pot I used to make uh, seals and stuff, so I used it to cast different things. This now is where we use the metal ring onto the foam. Now, this is, like I've said before, going to be, a, you know, a bit of a difficult one. I'm going to actually use... Uh, a pair of needle nose pliers just to open these all out a bit le a bit more flush a bit more level I'll open them out a touch more than I did with the screwdriver just to make this bit a bit easier if you guys want to do the same you can also I'd like to just mention, please, please stick around to the very end of the video for a quick message from myself. I'd really, really appreciate it. Um, there you go. So this now sits on fairly decently towards the front of the mask or the, the base of the 
the base of this piece, and you can see it sits on quite nicely. Um, like I said earlier, make sure that this sits quite flush with that. If you want to push it in a little bit, you're more than welcome to. All this is, all this metal piece is, is decoration. I can't stress enough how you don't have to worry about this too much. Like on mine, sits a touch proud, just like this one will. You don't have to worry about it because in the end, it is just decoration. All I advise that you push it on so that it's fairly flush with the rest of the gas mask. You don't have to worry about the underside because the underside no one really ever sees. When you're wearing a gas mask, that's pretty much what they see. So as long as you've got the top okay, you know, you'll be you'll be all right. So I'm gonna grab my trusty screwdriver. And once again, I'm gonna actually lift the camera for you guys a bit more so that I can hold it towards my body. Make sure it's pushed in, hold with your pinky and your index finger and sort of pull it towards the gas mask. And then squeeze these down onto the foam. Now, remember that foam ring we made? Well, not only is it there as like a coupler for the, the gas mask connector for the foam and everything, but it also sits there as something for the aluminium to hold on to. So keep a constant forward pressure with your thumb, making sure you keep this as close to the gas mask as you can. Sorry, let me turn myself a little bit so you guys can see. So push these down. Don't push them down as much as I've done on this one. This was my first time, very silly. Pushed it way too, look at them, they're way too far down. Ripping into the foam, munching into the foam. Unnecessary, unneeded. Only push them down a little bit. When you get to the underside, it's entirely up to you what you do. You can you can push them in and you know really go for it if you want to. But honestly, I don't think you should bother. Just have fun with it. Be gentle with it. Try and try and just work it out as best you can. Get it as close. If you can hide the fact that the foam piece is sticking out, like I'm trying to do, do it. If you can do it, do it. Checking it, making sure there's one or two that aren't quite where I want them to be. That's all right, actually. That bit there's not too bad. Right. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, cosplayers of all ages, there you have it. Your very own Death Corps of Krieg gas mask by Iron Warrior Cosplay. I am over the moon. I am genuinely over the moon. I can't tell you how happy this has made me that my pattern is now out there for you guys and you can build this exactly like I've done. You can tell people, hey, you know, like, oh, cool gas mask, where'd you get it? I made it from a pattern by Iron Warrior Cosplay. I'd really appreciate it. This gas mask pattern has taken me a fair while to get sorted, to get it so that it's perfect. I'm over the moon with that. I'm very proud of myself. I know I'm sort of bigging myself up a bit, but as of late, I, I sort of needed a win. And this to me is a big win for me. This is my original Creek gas mask. This will be my secondary backup Creek gas mask. I'm going to do exactly what I did to this to this. It is going to be weathered the same. It is going to be leather the same. The only things that will be different are the fact that I haven't pushed these in as much as i pushed these in. If anything, I kind of prefer this, like with, with these rings sort of not as pushed down. I kind of prefer that look, like a real GP5. Whereas this one, they're pushed a bit too far down and it sort of looks like it just ends abruptly. I, I kind of like the... I like the detail that these provide. These provide like a detail that you wouldn't normally have. I think they look really, really good. Um, you will forever be fettling with it and testing it. You never know. After you build this first one, or after you build the first pattern of this one, you might think, eh, it's not very good. I'll do another one. So you'll do another one. I really, really hope you guys enjoy this because I really am over the moon with how this looks. I'm happy with how it's come together. I'm happy with how easy it is. Yes, it does take a bit of time. 
I've been at this video now about six hours, but if I wasn't doing a tutorial video where I was like redoing stuff or if I stuttered or stammered, I'd have to stop the video and restart and show you a bit again. If I wasn't having to do that and I was putting this together, I reckon I could get this together maybe in two to three hours. So, you know, it's, it is pretty easy. Now, I'm saying it's pretty easy. That's coming from somebody who's been cosplaying since they were 16 years old. This gas mask here took me, I think, about two days to get right uh, in terms of the shape and stuff. Because I had to modify the pattern, edit it, get it right. I am so happy now that I can tell you guys that this pattern not only works and is just stunning... But you guys can build this at home now exactly like I've done. So with the camera adjusted, I can now show you guys, obviously, my Deathcore of Creed gas mask. The one I always wear. Um, this is the one I originally made. And with my new pattern, there it is. And just to show you guys, it fits me really well. If you're wondering what the visibility is like, it's incredible. I can see through it very, very clearly. My eyes might be quite high up in it, here and here, but you'd be surprised that's how a real gas mask is. Your eyes aren't bang on in the middle of the lenses, but you can see out of it clearly. It fits my face really well. It's comfortable here. It's comfortable at the chin. Holds my beard quite nicely. <laughs> that line here is usually from when I've been testing gas masks. So. No, I'll take it off and there'll be a line there. <laughs> but with that being said, it's always nice to sort of put on the original to show you as well. So, you know, you've got two gas masks. They're both the same. Very, very comfortable. Very, very fun to wear. Easy to make with my new pattern. I hope you guys like this. Um, I, am, uh, I am over the moon with these. Um, I'll show you guys the um, the material I used uh, to blacken the lenses. But again, it is just a sheet of black material. That's all it is. And yes, indeed, you can see through it. Obviously, it's got this shiny plastic on it, so the lens, camera lens has trouble seeing it. But if I find a semi-clear bit, just to show you, see what I mean? You know, obviously, there you go. So it, 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 you can see through it. Um, it does steam up. I recommend some spray. That'll help you out a great deal. But from me, Iron Warrior Cosplay, and my two Death Core of Krieg gas masks, I really hope this video has helped you guys build it. Please leave a comment below. Please subscribe. Please, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Follow me on my socials, which are linked below. If you guys really like this pattern, please share the Etsy link. Get people to buy it. I really, really appreciate it. You're helping out a cosplayer who's worked really hard at making a gas mask pattern for the masses. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you all enjoyed. And from me, my two gas masks, bye for now.